Hey guys, welcome to this video on how I edit my photos to look like disposable film. Uh, this is actually divided into two parts, this video being the first one because I have two ways of editing my photos to look like disposable film. The first one is why when I'm on the go, I use RNI film app, which is available to the iPhone. Side note, I'm sorry to uh, Android users. I, I'm not sure if they have it available for you guys, but you guys can still follow along through the editing process. You can actually use VSCO or Visco because that's what I used to use with their film presets before I hopped on RNI films. And the second way of my editing is through Lightroom. Um, that's what I use when I actually want to have more flexibility and control on my photos. And that's actually what I prefer even more when I edit my photos. It's just that RNI is way too handy when I don't have the time to edit through Lightroom. Also, you may be wondering why I divided these videos into two. That is because I wanted to put more emphasis on both tutorials and I don't want to drag the videos too long. I want to touch base first on my camera settings. So I would like you guys to set your camera's ISO between 800 to 1600. The reason behind that is because I would like the grain on the photos to look natural, meaning the grain is produced by the camera itself and not just by artificially adding the grain through the editing software. Personally, I don't like that because it looks too obvious that it wasn't shot on film. And the reason we want it to look more natural is because we, wanted pe we want people to think that the shots were taken using a film camera. And second, turn on the flash on your camera. For me, this is a personal preference, but I've shot disposable film cameras before and I've always shot my photos with the flash on. So it's only best to mimic that setting as well on the digital camera. So now hopping onto the editing software, like I said, it's the RNI Films app. And in terms of the preset that I actually choose, I choose consumer grade type of film simulations. And by consumer grade, some examples of those would be Kodak Gold, Ultra Max, Fuji Superior and all of that cheaper type of film stocks as opposed to Fuji Pro 400H and Portra. The reason behind that is because um, consumer grade film stocks, when you have actually shot one, they don't have too good of a dynamic range. And without being too technical, that only means that consumer grade film stocks do not hold up pretty well in too dark or too bright of situations and as a result it would look a little too dark where the shadows are crushed or it's a little too bright where the highlights are blown out that's only what it means and that's exactly what most disposable film cameras look straight out of the camera because it's a consumer grade film stock that said i stick to those type of um, film stock or presets but i want to emphasize that you do not have to limit yourself to those presets it's a good starting point but just experiment with what type of preset you would like to use on your image until you get the right feel for your image. There's no one preset that works for every photo and that's based on my experience and that's how I edit as well. Now with that said, let's hop on RNI Films app and start editing. This is RNI Films and I'm actually using my iPad to edit for this tutorial just simply because I wanted to have more screen real estate when editing. So now let's load our photo. So this is the photo. As you guys can see, uh, this is the base photo that, straight, that came out straight out of the camera. It's a little bit grainy already. And like I said, that is the reason why I wanted you guys to have your camera set your ISO to 800 or 1600. Also, I just would like to mention that RNI have only a few free presets, but I will be using only the free presets so then everyone could follow along. Because right now I actually have a pro subscription, meaning I have every um, film simulation unlocked for me, but I'm not using any of that. Also, RNI Films is offering different um, type of film simulation. There's negative, there's slide, there's instant, there's black and white, there's vintage. But uh, for this specific tutorial, I would stick to negative because that's what I always use for every photo that I edit with this app. With that being said, let's now straight jump into which film stock I'll be using. Also, I would like to mention that even though uh, the other presets are actually locked you can actually still apply them such as for quota gold 200 like i said for this one this is unlocked for me because i have the pro subscription so you can just try it out and see it for yourself i think i'm gonna stick to agca vista 100 and when i said about the consumer grade film stocks as you guys can see from this image the black parts of the photo are a little bit crushed meaning like it's way too dark on those spots and that's exactly what i meant when 
consumer grade film stocks does not hold up pretty well in too dark or too bright situations and that's exactly why i wanted you guys to make use of these type of simulations because it definitely mimics the look of a disposable film camera so now that i have selected my film stock i'm gonna go start editing brightness i think i'm happy with it i'm gonna go contrast i'm gonna just lessen the contrast add a little bit detail more detail to the image i think that's good strength uh, for this one this is the strength of the preset you can definitely um crank it down to what suits your taste i think i'm just gonna set mine to around 86 percent clarity also just know that there is no one setting that i have for every photo i actually go through each step the same way for every photo because um not every photo has the same uh lighting so that way i have to go through and make sure that I have the specific look that I want for every photo. Green. This is to add some more grain. Uh, this is what I'm telling you guys when you just specifically added grain on the photo using the editing software. If you just crank it up to the maximum, it doesn't look too good. And it's too obvious that the grain is just added through a editing software. And it for me, it doesn't sell the look. But I guess it's up, It's really up to you what kind of look you really wanted to go for. So, you know, my preference is not that. So I'm just going to probably stick to right around 14%. Shadows, I would definitely add a little bit just to add a little bit more detail to the darker parts of the photo. Then highlights. I think the highlights are pretty good on this one. Maybe just a tad bit. There we go. I'm pretty happy with the white balance of this photo. So I'm going to go to the tint. So right at this point, the tint looks pretty good already, but I think I want to add a little bit of green tint to it just because it really mimics that look of the gas station when I shot this photo. Saturation, we can definitely add a little bit, you know, because uh, some photos that's, that come out of the disposable film camera have a more saturated look. And then sharpen. This is the part where I would unsharpen the image just a little bit, just because we know that this photo was taken on a digital camera with a pretty good Carl Zeiss glass. And disposable cameras are using plastic lenses, so we would like to mimic that look where it has been taken on a plastic camera with a plastic lens that has a little bit of a blurry look so unsharpening the image would kind of add to that look as well so now vignette just maybe add a little bit yeah i think it looks good fade i'm not a big fan of adding fade to my photos but let's try yeah maybe just a little bit right here i think that looks good it's before after before after now the dust um uh, this is more of personal preference now. I can definitely add dust to your photos, if you will. But uh, I'd stick to no dust for this particular one. RNI films also offer a date stamp, which is amazing. But uh, this is really not my taste, so I'm not going to add it. Also, vintage lens. This one is a pro feature that you can use and try. To make it look like as if it was taken on a really old lens. But this one is just a nice to have, but unsharpening the photo is more than good enough, in my opinion. So that said, I think I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. Uh, as you guys can see from the before and the after, I am really happy with this photo. And I think I'm going to go and ship this out. And that's pretty much it for me for this photo. As you guys can see, before on the left, after on the right. So that's pretty much it on how I edit my photos through the RNI Films app. And it's really nice to have this type of app where it makes it a lot easier for me when I am on the go, like I said. But also stay tuned for the second part of this tutorial where I edit my photos through Lightroom. Also, um, if you guys have any questions or confusion or anything like that, please feel free to comment in the comment section down below and ask me any questions. Also, you can reach me a lot faster through my Instagram DMs, which you will be able to find in the comment section down below. Just shoot me a message there and I'll be able to respond immediately. So yeah, I hope you guys pick something up out of this video and you enjoyed this video as much as I did. And until next time, stay safe, keep shooting, peace. This is the process of taking pictures of cars at night.